check, check, microphone check, one, two. Why do I do this? I find myself doing it all the time, even though I know there's no one on the other end that can tell me if it sounds good. This device right here, though, is pretty important. Cardioid, omnidynamic, blah, blah. What, what does it all mean? I'm Joe, and here's what I know about microphones. It's a pretty common question. What microphone should we as content creators be using for our projects? You might be surprised to find that you don't have to drop a car payment to get excellent sound quality for your podcast or video content. Now, there are a million different opinions about what brand of microphone you should use. Should I use USB? Should I go wireless with it? Do I buy a mixer and go analog? Look, with each question, there are a million answers and I'm not here to argue what's best for you because in all honesty, it all depends on your specific needs. So I'm going to give you a rundown of what the differences are and the real world applications and maybe you can decide what's really best for you. Cool? Let's talk about directional polarity. What the f*** is that? Directional polarity is the pattern that your microphone receives audio with. Why does that matter? Well, it just does. Am I going to explain the science behind it? Probably not. Here's what I'll explain. I'll give you four patterns you absolutely need to know. These are the most common in microphones today. Omnidirectional, bidirectional, cardioid, and supercardioid. First, we'll start with omnidirectional. It does exactly what it sounds like. It captures sound from multiple directions. Most common with this pattern is the lavalier or lapel mic. There are also a bunch of other types of microphones out there with this pattern and they usually come with a little switch to change it to other patterns like this one. Next we have bidirectional. Again, like the name, this receives sounds from two different directions of the microphone. This mic right here also has a switch for that as well. And most bottle cap mics like this are built for bidirectional, very popular with duet singing and ASMR. Next we have cardioid. Cardioid has a mushroom shaped pattern and pushes its polarity to the front of the microphone. This is commonly used for what I'm doing right now, talking to you, um, but this pattern has its limits and usually doesn't go too far from the ball of the mic. And finally, we have super cardioid. This microphone has a hyper focused frontal pattern that directs its reception to the front from long distances, commonly referred to as a shotgun mic. These are a very specific type of microphone used by videographers for TV shows, lifestyle shows, and even backup sound for shows like this. Okay, so now that we've covered patterns, let's go over the types of microphones. But I thought we did. No, those are just the patterns certain microphones use. Next, I'll talk about the two types of microphones and which use these patterns. And they are dynamic and condenser microphones. The dynamic microphone. Dynamic mics receive audio through those patterns I just talked about passively. In a nutshell, it means it's not powered by an extra source other than the source that it's connected to. Most dynamic mics require a mixer or an audio interface. There are USB versions, but they're less common. What's great about a dynamic mic is its usage of the cardioid pattern. It's the best option for a podcaster or vlogger that's just starting out, doesn't have a studio, or has no soundproofing where they record. And it's easy on the wallet. You can pick up this Behringer clone of the Shure SM58 for like 40 bucks on Amazon. The link will be in the description. This is a cardioid only microphone though. It comes with no other patterns. Dynamic mics also come in this little guy here, the lav mic. This guy is used for field interviews and yeah, sometimes vlogging. Like in my case, I use it for my backup audio. These are almost always omnidirectional mics because we usually wear them underneath things and usually have to capture sound while we move. The second type of mic is the condenser mic. These mics are active mics. They require a battery or something called phantom power. They will not work without a power source because they require electricity to produce a signal. 
these are really popular with the ASMR crowd, recording artists, and studio podcasters or radio DJs. These mics are very sensitive, so they should be used in soundproof studios. Not that you shouldn't use them for your podcast, it depends on what kind of sound you're looking for, but traditionally they're used in studios, which is why they're often referred to as studio mics. Here's a little knowledge nugget for you. If you're a podcaster and you want to get studio quality sound out of your condenser mic and don't have the money to support a studio, hop in your closet and hit the record button. I'm serious, it really helps up the sound of your cast and also keeps the kids from waking up if you do some late night podcasting. As for my studio, my walls are pretty close to me and despite the Bennigan's look here, I get quite a bit of echo when using a condenser mic, like in my previous episode. I used this guy right here. This is a type of condenser that's called a super cardioid, or you guessed it, a shotgun mic. Right here, I have a large diaphragm bottle cap mic. This is also a condenser mic. It has a bunch of patterns to choose from, including one option I haven't talked about, low cut or high pass. This is common on condenser mics and some dynamic mics. It basically cuts out the low frequency rumble of background noises like fans, air conditioning, refrigerators, or even really bassy vocals. So let's recap real quick so that you can make a decision based on your environment and needs. Like I said, I don't know your situation and I won't presume to, so I'll run it down and give you some budget friendly options that we can choose from. Okay, so we started with dynamic mics, the pros. They have the best user experience because they are great for beginners all the way up to pros. They come in the cardioid pattern which help you sound great if you have no studio, which also helps keep you from having to edit the audio too much in post production. The cons? If you want to add more patterns, it gets pricey. They mostly play best with audio interfaces and small life mixers, so there's an added cost there and they're less likely to be plug and play. Your best bet? the Audio-Technica streaming podcasting pack. For 130 bucks, you get an all-in-one podcast package. It's a dynamic mic, it's USB, so plug and play, and it comes with headphones and a Studio Boom arm stand. It's the perfect starter kit if you're looking for a dynamic mic setup. We also looked at condenser microphones, the pros. A lot of them come with a USB option, which eliminates the need to buy extra equipment like mixers and audio interfaces, keeping costs low. They capture sound fairly easily from longer distances and come with quite a few polarity patterns out of the box, which makes them great for large forum podcasting or vloggers that move a lot during their videos. The cons. Because of their sensitivity, they tend to capture every sound in the room, which amplifies echo and makes editing a little bit tedious. These microphones can be bulky and require power of some sort, whether it be through battery power or phantom power. Your best bet for just over 100 bills, the Behringer Euphoria Studio Recording and Podcasting Bundle is the perfect starter kit for the beginning podcaster in the market for a condenser microphone. You might be asking why I recommended a dynamic mic without an interface and a condenser mic with an interface. Why? I'm not a mic snob, and I'm always on the lookout for the best situation for the average Joe or Josefina to step into. The dynamic mic being USB was unique and in all honesty looked like a good buy from a budget standpoint because you can always add it to an interface in the future if you like. As for the condenser recommendation, I feel like adding the interface in with the microphone supplied is better than purchasing a USB condenser that you end up having to replace the batteries on all the time. It's just a more efficient buy, in my opinion. That being said, you can find the two packages for those microphones in the links in the description below. Like I said, there are a ton of opinions on what's best for content creation because there are a ton of different situations creators find themselves in. It's really all up to you as the creator. That said, we've reached the end of the show. Please slap that subscribe button, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And if all else fails, go to joeknowsthings.com. All of my content will be there for you, plus more. I'm Joe, and that's what I know about microphones. <laughs>